Hello families, Juwan Buford. I want to talk about overcoming objections. And I received a phone call uh, from a client of mine who referred me to someone else that they thought could really benefit from the services that um, we provide. And I thought this, the back and forth that occurred during this conversation would be instructive and helpful. And I hope it's well received. But I ended up having a conversation, following up with the referral. And what had transpired, it was like immediately obvious to me that the person that did the referral, um, they pretty much tried to do my job, which means they tried to inform the person inside and out about every aspect of the services and benefits we provide as entrepreneurs. And, you know, as a result, the person kind of felt like they already knew um, things that they didn't know. And flat out told me, look, I'm not interested. I don't think it can help me. Now, look, I believe that several years ago, I may have immediately punched back or responded sharply to that, right? Like, how do you know you did? We haven't had a conversation. I mean, and I would have probably came up with something way more creative than that, but I'm a different person today. And I need you to understand the mindset going into this conversation. And I think it will inform you about why and how I responded. And here's the thing. When I called him up, understand this. I wasn't looking to make a sale. I know it sounds insane, right? I'm in sales, but I wasn't looking to make a sale. No, my objective, quite frankly, was to make a new friend. My objective, quite frankly, was to build a new relationship. Remember, at the end of the day, you reach a point in your business where your bag is not the transaction. That's not the bag. The transact, the bag is the relationship. The bag is meeting someone who I have no familiarity with um, that has at least been introduced to me or what I offer, my value prop, in a favorable way, right? Um, even if it was the wrong way. <laughs> Um, the bag is developing a relationship with that person and whether they decided to do business with me, whether they started to patronize me or not, I wasn't indifferent, but really I was, I was really indifferent, right? Cause I want the relationship. I knew that if I could engage this person and speak to them in such a manner where they understood that I actually cared about their well being, that I was actually passionate about the value proposition and mission and purpose that whether they did business with me or not, they could potentially be an advocate, may end up referring me to other individuals, or quite frankly, may end up becoming a client. So that was my objection. Uh, I said objection, my goodness. I'm talking about objection. Anyway, that was my objective. And so the moment he said, look, you know, I don't have an interest in it. I don't think you helped me out. I said, that's great. That's fantastic. And I can almost hear the the like the gasp almost a surprise right when i said that in response because that literally was my response that's great that's fantastic so you know if you don't mind me asking you know how do you know this person what's your relationship with them how do you know each other and he responded he proceeded to kind of tell me how they met and their their story together and i said that's great that's fantastic i said if you understand because of course when he's telling the story he started he start talking a little bit about his family he started giving me some other insight and information about who he was and so I said, that's great. You know, I'm really glad you were introduced to what it is that we do by that person. Sounds like you have family. Tell me about your family. And, you know, do you have kids? And he said, yeah, I'm kids, married. I've been living in so-and-so. I didn't ask him where he lived, but he told me. <laughs> he said, I live in, in Texas and I have this business going on. I have this going on. I said, oh, wow, tell me about your business. How'd you get that started? I mean, I may be here to uh, make some referrals to you. And so he proceeds to talk to me about his business for a good two, three minutes. Right, telling me the inside and out. Um, of course, I'm asking, how'd you get started? Why'd you get started? What are you taking aim at? What's most important to you? He starts telling me about, you know, how he wants to invest in crypto and invest in Forex, and he wants to get involved in real estate and all these other different business endeavors that he had an interest in. And then, I, you know, I finally asked, I said, look, you know, tomorrow earning a lot of money here. Uh, I'm assuming a quarterly vacation is in, in store for you and your family. He starts about, he starts chuckling, saying, yeah, the wife wants to do this and wants to do that. And I want to do this for my kids. And yeah, I do like to travel and I do like real estate and I like art and all the other fun stuff. And I'm just listening. Now, some of you might be asking, where is all this going? Form, family, occupation, recreation, motivation. Here's the thing, whether he was looking to buy or not, remember the bag is the relationship. So that's what I took aim at. Family, occupation, recreation, motivation. I know 
for two reasons. First, it's psychological. A business owner or entrepreneur in particular, their favorite topic is going to be their business. It's going to be what they do and why they do it. And I was more than happy to sit back and listen to what he did for a living and why they did it. Um, I also know psychologically that if I can have put a person in a situation where they're comfortable telling me about their family, their occupation and recreation or motivation, if I can get them to talk about at least three out of the four um, within the first five minutes, that person's going to like me. They're going to trust me. They're going to feel comfortable with me. Why? Because that's just how we're hotwired. Okay. We think we make decisions with our cerebellum. No, most of it is made with cerebrum. We use the cerebellum to justify our decisions. In other words, most of the decisions we make are emotional. We use our intellect to justify our emotional decisions. And that's 99.9% .9 of us. That's just the way we get down. That's the way we behave. And it's a good reason for that. It's the reason why the human beings have survived for centuries, right? Um, another story from another time, but you get the point, right? But this is what I also know on a very practical level. As an entrepreneur, specifically as a B2B entrepreneur, somebody who earns a living serving the needs of other entrepreneurs and business owners, I understand that at the end of the day, this business will always be about relationships. It will always, always be about whether or not people have a good taste in their mouth. Um, and that's where I want the majority of my business to come from. I don't want to have to spend money on ads. I will, I don't want to have to. I don't want to have to spend money on elaborate marketing um, schemas and um, elaborate marketing tactics unnecessarily. I will spend the money because it's necessary to scale. Sometimes you just have to do what you have to do to get your brand out there. But if I had a choice, I would love the uber majority of my business to come from referrals. People who have a good taste in their mouth, people whom I've served and done right by. Right, and people who understand my mission, vision, and purpose. So when they're out there in the field, out there in the marketplace, dealing with their family, friends, and other folks whom they engage with, I'm top of mind, right? That's the bag. And so, of course, after I asked all these questions, I knew he was gonna have a much more favorable response to any other questions I would ask. So once he shared his story, once we chatted a little bit, kind of commiserated, I talked a little bit about my family and what's most important to me, and. You know, I began to share my reason why for doing a business. I said, you know, part of the reason why I got into involved with Legal Shield um, and is because I wanted to serve people like you. I, I believe entrepreneurship is empowerment. I want to see entrepreneurs level up. I want to see them grow from a team of me to a team of we. Have more control what happens at their kitchen table. Have more control what happens at their in their communities. You know, we hear people talk about you know last hire and first fire. You know, for those of us who aren't happy with the way that transpires oftentimes, particularly in the African American community. Look, I want to empower us to be able to do more hiring ourselves. Uh, we don't like how we're being treated in our neighborhoods and communities. Entrepreneurship puts us in a powerful position to do something about it. And I could hear him nodding his head through the phone like, yeah, you're absolutely right. And, you know, I asked him, you know, if you don't mind, cause I, I know what we're doing may or may not be for you, but you mentioned you have kids. And, you know, it's something I always ask because I have children and, you know, so often, you know, life happens. And unfortunately, for most of us, we don't have our estate plans done. We never kind of update it on a consistent or regular basis. And, you know, I love my children more than worse, but also indeed. So I've invested in doing things like getting my estate plan done because I understand only people who enter probate court and judges and the attorneys. You know, just as an aside, have you taken the time to get your estate plan done? I hope you're following me here. Part of the reason I asked that question because I was genuinely interested. I was curious and I meant what I said. The only people who went in probate court are judges and the attorneys. You don't have that document done. When most of us pass away or suffer some type of illness, the only thing we typically leave behind are memories, tears, and pictures and you know a bunch of sour feelings that we haven't had in our business in that front. But keep in mind, I formed him. F-O-R-M. So I learned about his family. When he told me about his family, he told me about the ages of his children. I know that 70 to 90% of individuals, depending on the community and their socioeconomic status, typically have not updated their state plans or even done them at all. So I just asked. And he was receptive to the question because I developed a relationship. I developed a rapport with him first. I just didn't cut to the chase and try to go back and forth about why what we do, it could be so valuable to him. And of course, he says, no, nah, I hadn't, you know, I know it's important. I just haven't quite gotten around to it, right? I would not have gotten an honest answer had I not developed a report with him. Form, family, occupation, recreation, motivation. Look, this simple formula, this simple acronym is so absolutely important. So he shared that with me. And I said, you know, if I could show you a way to get your estate plan done, 
without paying $1,500, $2,000 like I did several plus years ago to have my estate plan done? Is that something that would be of interest? He says, well, yeah, that's important. I said, well, look, that's, that's something that we do. And once again, what we're doing may or may not be for you, but you owe it to yourself to take a deeper dive. Most of the people I know who are sharp, who are smart, who've done well for themselves, they tend to make decisions based on 100% information, not hearsay. You wouldn't buy a house or invest in a market just on hearsay alone. You probably do your due diligence and research, right? He says, yeah, of course I would. I said, I thought so. How about we just set up an opportunity? He stopped me. He said, you know what? Let's set up an appointment this time, this day. I'd like to learn more about what you're doing. I'd like to learn more about, number one, how you can help my family and perhaps live my business. And that's how I overcame that objection, right? So I didn't go through a bunch of hoops about how fantastic our services were or in any of the other business endeavors I'm involved in. I didn't try to pivot in that way. I stayed genuine, right? Um, I didn't have to talk about features and benefits. I didn't have to beat him down about why he's making a foolish decision by um, not taking the time to learn more. I didn't do any of that. I went straight for the relationship and that's the bag. The bottom line is whether he set that foul appointment with me or not, whether he was interested in learning more or not, I knew by the end of our exchange, he was gonna like no one trust me, which means the door will always be open for me to come back and talk to him again about any and everything I'm involved in. As long as I stay congruent and I'm not coming out of a different bag next time I talk to him, right? There's integrity to what it is I say and do and the things I say I'm committed to. So I hope this brief talk, while wow, a little bit longer than I anticipated, uh, lands well with you and is of benefit. As always, celebrate success in advance. Goodbye for now.